I can't wait to introduce our next guest because it is a supreme honor for me. Margaret Klein Solomon, who was referred to by Bill in the tape, uh, is the executive director of climate mobilization. Like her, we believe this requires a World War II type effort. And if you really want to know how much money a green environment's going to create, I would urge you to look at the economy of the United States of America in 1939 and compare it to the economy of the United States of America in 1947, the year I was born. It turns out we got really rich by doing the right thing. We mobilized. We saved democracy for the free world, and in the process, we built the Western democracy that's been running the world for the, ever since. The same or better awaits us if Margaret Klein Solomon is successful, and I believe she will be with her efforts at climate mobilization. And I'm really honored to introduce you because I think what you're doing is legendary, and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Ronaldo, Christie, the World Business Academy, and uh, also, thank you to the local Santa Barbara members of the climate mobilization, Grace, Emiliano, and Bob. Um, very exciting. <laughs> the mission of the climate mobilization is to initiate World War II scale climate mobilization that protects humanity and the natural world from the climate apocalypse. We exist to push the climate movement farther, to say more ambition, more strength, faster. And we do this on several levels. On the individual level, where we empower people to join this most important fight we have local mobilization laboratories, particularly happening in the Bay Area and in Los Angeles. We're working on the state level where Green New Deal and climate emergency resolutions and legislation is being prepared in New York State and in California. We're providing national guidance for a potential declaration of climate emergency at the congressional level and we're working with presidential candidates to get them to embrace the strongest possible climate message. And we're working internationally. Our climate emergency declaration campaign, which has started on the local level, has exploded internationally. More than 300 cities in the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, especially Quebec, where they got like 250 cities, and Australia, it, this campaign has taken off with these cities declaring a climate emergency and committing to mobilization for zero emissions by 2030. Where the uh, local climate mobilization group here in Santa Barbara is working on just that type of declaration here. And we do it all all these, all these things that we've accomplished and this shift in the climate movement that you might have noticed in the last several months, like, wow, that's a lot more ambition than uh, we've been hearing recently. We've, we've accomplished all of this with one tool, and that's telling the truth. It might seem like common sense, but for decades, the climate and environmental movement have held back from telling the truth. And so as a clinical psychologist, which is my training, I came into this work five years ago with the question, why are we committing passive suicide as a country and as a species? Do we want to die? Or, is it, or, or, or are we blocked from responding to this crisis with the intensity that it needs. The truth is that everything we love and care about and value is in danger. The truth is that I'm in danger, you're in danger, our families are in danger, everything is on the line. And 
the common sense solution is to fight this crisis with everything that we have. And that's what this country did in World War II. In just a few years, not decades, we mobilized our entire economy and society for a common purpose, winning the war. We transformed our industrial capacity into a war material production machine that armed the allies, rebuilt our own armed forces, and as Ronaldo was saying, just totally transformed our economy. We can do it again, but only if we accept intellectually and emotionally the scale and urgency of this crisis. We can do it only if we take responsibility personally for stopping this. To say, this climate crisis, this is not going to happen on my watch. I am not going to let this happen. That was the mentality with which I started the climate mobilization and the mentality that it has brought to the climate movement. And I am so happy to say that it is the mentality that the climate movement is now adopting. In, in the last four months, we have seen, actually three months, we have seen such a breakthrough with Extinction Rebellion and the school strikers in the streets, with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, <laughs> bringing the Green New Deal into Congress, backed up by the Sunrise Movement, an incredibly brave and truth-based organization. We, and we've seen these cities around the world say, this is an emergency and business as usual, gradual solutions are not going to cut it. With this kind of transformation, the, the, the name of this program tonight is that 2019 is the year for climate mobilization, and I really believe that. We, we wrapped up 2018 with a huge burst of enthusiasm, and we have started out this year very strong. This is the year that we, can, that we as the movement can set the agenda for the, uh, the congressional and presidential elections. We have seen, because of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's leadership and the Sunrise Movement and a coalition of organizations, we have seen more than 80 members of the House of Representatives and nine senators, including most, almost all of the prominent presidential candidates, signing on to a World War II scale climate mobilization that brings the United States to net zero emissions in 10 years. That is a huge breakthrough. So the, the table is set, the stage is set, everything is ready, and all that we need is you. We need everyone to say, this is it, this is the time, and I am going all in to solve this crisis. I am not going to hold back because this is the year. This is our last chance. We have to get this done. I cannot tell you how important it is, and I think you already know. So for, for a long time, the climate mobilization felt really alone. We felt like we were screaming the truth into a void or something like that. But those days are over, and the truth is actually on the agenda now. And it's, it's up to us to build the power to, uh, to, to elect the right people 
and to build the power to hold them accountable. I think, I think we all have a lot of power right now, probably much more than we might even realize. And it's time to get really serious. So, so yeah, I urge everyone to join the climate emergency movement, which does not advocate for a gradual transition off of fossil fuels or industrial agriculture, but rather advocates for an emergency mobilization that breaks out of normal mode and pulls out all the stops. In World War II, we transitioned our economy through incredibly strong regulation, massive investment, and by bringing everyone in. We have everything we need. The technology is there. All we need is the will. And I think we can do it. You know, uh, one of my favorite lines for those of you hang around these events with us uh, is um, I've never, I read a lot, as you know, I've never read about, heard about, seen any problem, any problem that human civilization faces that cannot be solved with today's resources and technology. We have that. What we lack is the will. And what Margaret Klein Solomon is talking about is changing that will. It's no longer acceptable. And with all due respect to the IPCC that said we have 11 years to go, they're wrong. If you read my stuff, we passed that point about eight years ago. So the bottom line is this is a crisis of massive proportions. You're looking at the end of human civilization as we know it within the next 35 years. How many of you have children or grandchildren that will be alive in 35 years? Show of hands. Okay. Do you want them to face a dystopian future? A future where they will be envious of those of us who are gone. That's what's coming. And that's not a maybe. That's a for sure. That's an absolutely certain outcome. And we can solve it. We have the technology. We have the resources. And as Bill observed, Bill McKibben, we've spent 30 years trying to do what's practical, and it hasn't done any good. Because here's where we are today. <laughs>